One of the many, many terrible things about the real world is that for a lot of folks, getting your own home is ridiculously difficult, let alone one built atop a waterfall with an eight-car garage. Enter video games. Because in this medium, weirdly often, you'll find it's possible to acquire absolutely stunning houses as a reward for, say, finishing a side quest. Often customizable, always cozy, and an absolutely perfect slice of escapism. We love it when a game rewards you with a house, and these are the best ones out there. Here are the video game houses so lush they made you want to risk electrocution by climbing inside your console in a bid to live in them. We all know that the real way to play The Sims is to boot up a game, type in the mother load money cheat, and then immediately build the house of your dreams. However, an even faster way to immediately get a gorgeous home is to just play as the goth family. From the very first game, their home has always been the most stately, but our personal favourite has to be the iteration found in Sims 4, Ophelia Villa in Willow Creek. Bella and Mortimer Goth's family home is the must-have three-bed, three-bath abode for anyone who enjoys the aesthetic of a gothic manor home and celebrates Halloween from the 1st of September until the 24th of December. The ground floor of this luxurious building has a beautiful living room with a working fireplace, and on your way to the beautiful kitchen with a fancy see-through fridge, you'll walk through a beautiful dining room, complete with butler statue. Beautiful! At the top of the rather grand staircase, there's a gorgeous grand piano, where the family can play sweet music together. Ah, lovely. It's like I'm in the Royal Albert Hall. Also on this floor are two of the bedrooms, with floor space that London homes could only dream of. Mortimer and Bella not only have an ensuite, but also a sofa suite, and their teenage daughter Cassandra has an adorable book nook that would leave booktubers understandably green with envy. Ah, a of Fleena. But for our money, or 249,796 simoleons to be precise, the best part of the house is the rooftop bedroom of the youngest goth, Alexander. This cosy children's room is the perfect hideaway with a 360 degree view. Sure, it'd be costly to heat, but if they want it heated, are they really goths? Geralt from The Witcher is a monster hunter, well used to roughing it in the woods night after night with only a puddle of wyvern blood for a pillow. So how come he gets a vineyard and not me? Aforementioned vineyard is Corvo Bianco, a sprawling estate nestled in the fertile hills of Toussaint in The Witcher 3's Blood and Wine DLC. Built upon elven ruins, this gorgeous villa and its acreage are gifted to Geralt partway through the DLC's story, leaving him with the task of improving it with features such as stables, a gigantic bed, or a fantastical nude portrait of himself. Well, that's the first thing you've got to get up in any new house. It's a real power play against the movers. Upgrading Corvo Bianca is one of the most enjoyable and one of few relaxing parts of The Witcher 3, because this sun-drenched property is just a genuine pleasure to potter around. Enjoying the warm sun, tinkering with the placement of bits of armour, and doing whatever it takes to silence the voice inside your mind reminding you that a duchess will probably never gift you with a vineyard and on-site staff. It's hard to be bitter though when Corvo Bianca is such a delightful and hard-earned endpoint for Geralt's quest. Long-time love interest Yennefer can even move in. And you'll bring me cool drinks. I absolutely will not, Yennefer, because I have a guy for that. Major Domo, I'm thinking sangria. <laughs> <laughs> One problem with most homes is that should you want to make any major structural changes, you need to get an architect, planning permission, and wait weeks, months, or even years for it to be actually, you know, built. This is a problem solved with the Tarrytown home you can build in Tears of the Kingdom. Ah. This amazing modular marvel is like if IKEA and LEGO decided to team up and go into housing development, which, going by Link's new pad, would actually be pretty neat. Ooh. 
you can just purchase the rooms you want from High Rules Hudson Construction, along with whichever connecting halls and staircases you fancy, from a lovely catalogue of options. <laughs> they even include gardens, ponds, and a stable for one of your horses to chill in. Oh. If you don't like the layout, well, you can change it up whenever you want, and you can always add new rooms to bring extra functionality to the home, such as a nice shrine or a place to display your latest photography. Ah. See, this is the kind of thing you have time to do when you don't need to get planning permission. Time well spent. You get the feeling that Eden Games, the makers of Test Drive Unlimited 2, desperately wanted to make a home decorating game, but couldn't avoid the likes of Mercedes and Ferrari insisting that the game have cars in it. As such, alongside the expected amount of hooning across beautiful island environments in luxury licensed cars, Test Drive Unlimited 2 also features an unexpectedly large number of purchasable, customizable homes that you can explore at your leisure in first person. making this one of vanishingly few racing games where you can actually get out of the car and go look at fish for a while. Those fish are to be found on the yacht property on the Oahu Island, which can be yours for a cool $7 million, making it the most expensive home in the game. But if you ask us, no in-game home is quite so eye-twitchingly desirable as Falls House, the expansive mansion spread decadently across the top of an actual G-damned waterfall. Any threat of wanting to go outside and participate in races is quickly extinguished as you enjoy the Falls House's water feature, pool and stunning lounge space. There's an eight-car garage, of course, but you'll probably spend more time upstairs, where you can forget about vehicles completely in favour of tweaking the walls, chairs, floors, and much more, with a whopping 341 pieces of available furniture. Why have you put 341 pieces of furniture in a driving game? Is the question we imagine a concerned Mercedes would have asked if Eden Games hadn't stopped answering the phone. Anyone who's watched Stanley Tucci searching for Italy can tell you of the sudden desire they felt to immediately move to Italy and eat nothing but mozzarella and pasta for the rest of their days. Well, Stanley Tucci describes it to you. I feel like he'd be into that. But where to live? Well, old school Assassin's Creed fans have just the place for you, the Villa Auditori in Monteregioni. Monteregioni may be an actual real-life place in real-life Italy, but the Villa Auditori is based upon the Villa di Maiano near Florence, just given some assassin flair. On the ground floor, there are the rooms dedicated to displaying your weapons and armour, a must-have for anyone in Ezio's line of work, or someone who spends a lot of money at the sword stores at Comic-Cons. Then there are the two studies, our favourite being the one where you can manage your finances and have direct access to an architect to make upgrades to the entire town. Fully upgraded, the town around this beautiful villa becomes a bustling hub where you can add to your weapon collection or dye your clothing in the latest season's colours. Seems people are just dying to live here. <laughs> Sorry. The ground floor also has easy access to the gardens, which are not only beautiful and full of gorgeous little statues, but a perfect size for an energy-filled assassin to run around. And if that's not enough, there are the underground spaces beneath the villa, which basically serve as built-in assault courses for those who want to stay fit without the gym membership. The crypt even has a pool, and it's clear some visitors just don't want to leave. Seems people are just dying to live here! <laughs> Sorry. Okay. For more glamorous occasions, the villa sits atop a domed underground chamber, lined with statues of important historical figures within the Assassin's Brotherhood. For our Florins, this space would be amazing for some kind of fancy banquet or ball. 
For quieter evenings, you can head to Ezio's cute attic study. Yes, we love a hideaway in the rafters. But the first floor is where it's at. It's where you can find the home single bedroom, which, seeing as Ezio shares his home with his mother and sister, means they're probably sleeping on the stone marble floor somewhere. Hmm, maybe that's why they made you get all those feathers. She's probably building a new mattress. But if you have to sleep on rock, why not do it surrounded by all the best Renaissance art money can buy? Indeed, it seems that every historically and culturally significant painting of the era can be purchased for Ezio's very own private art gallery, creating a collection probably worth ten times more than the actual brick and mortar it sits within. Overall, while we probably put a couple more beds in so people could, you know, live there, this home is definitely nicer than a studio cupboard in Knightsbridge, even if one of the Borgia family does blow it up in the next game. Hey, nothing wrong with a fixer-upper. Now, does anyone know of a good cannonball removal service? What's up? Let's go make trouble. It's a damning indictment of the housing market that any residence in Fallout New Vegas could genuinely be described as a dream home. And yet, we absolutely would not turn our noses up at the lightly irradiated keys to the presidential suite of the game's Lucky 38 Hotel and Casino. This luxurious player character housing becomes available once you progress the game's main quest to a certain point. And we'd understand if you never went anywhere else beyond that point, because this deluxe suite has a huge comfortable bed inside it, and outside it is mostly being relentlessly attacked by four-foot-high wasps and scrabbling to survive against marauding mutants with only a weedy hunting rifle to defend yourself. Okay, weedy is a relative term. Admittedly, the Lucky 38 presidential suite is quite dingy on account of having been left to rot for two centuries before you took ownership, but you could say the same of plenty of central London properties, and at least here there's space for a pool table, two fridges, and plenty of other square foot consuming goodies that can be unlocked by a terminal in the hall. The only downside is that all your in-game companions will also take up residence. I mean, we've nothing against a flat share, but something tells me Rex the Cyborg Dog is the kind of housemate who doesn't label his food properly. On the plus side, there's plenty of space and non-irradiated drinking water available both from the taps for the humanoids and from the toilet for Rex. And if Rex didn't want me sharing, well, you should have labelled it then, shouldn't you Rex? That's what the labels are for. The city of Los Santos isn't always the most glamorous, but much like when you find a pound coin down the back of a sofa, occasionally there's a glimmer of something lovely amid all the crap. Among all the heists and drugs and explosions, GTA V's satirical slant on Los Angeles wouldn't be complete without their version of the gorgeous houses in the Hollywood Hills. And one of these can be all yours, or more accurately, all Franklin's, once you've murdered a CEO, which is probably cheaper than what these places actually cost IRL. And we needed someone to live there you know, for tax purposes, so some guys are moving your stuff in. Oh, s Up in the Vinewood Hills is 3671 Wispy Mound Drive, a stylish modern home that puts the angles in Los Angeles. It's a neatly segmented space, with areas to sit and chill by the fire, sit and watch a huge TV, sit by the infinity pool. Let's just say there are a lot of places to put your feet up between stressful missions. We're particularly jealous of the huge dining room table, which sure would be nice to have friends sat around for a lovely dinner, but would be equally amazing for a tabletop night. Think of the space for miniatures! Usefully, in-game it provides a place to change your outfit and a place to rest up and save your progress. But even in real life, we'd love a walk-in wardrobe this huge and a bed with these amazing views of the city. The home does have some mysterious doors on the lower level that we can't open, but hey, I'm sure there's nothing terrible or incriminating in those rooms. Wait! What if that's where they're developing GTA 6? This could be a whole video! <sighs> so those are some of the incredible houses and games that the game just gives you as a reward and then expects you to be satisfied with the rest of your real life? I don't think so. I'll retreat to my mind palace, thanks. 
which is my Test Drive Unlimited 2 house. Oh yeah, I'm having guests round. They're admiring the water feature. Oh yes, they've clocked the pool table, but I don't mention it. I don't mention it. I don't want to be gauche. What about the videos? <sighs> what about the videos? What, what other videos can people watch? Uh, other videos you can watch include this one, which is an eight car garage. Um, and this one down here, which is a customizable coffee table. Uh, I don't know, maybe a blue accent would be nice in here. Really offset the waterfall. 